Our scripture this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have uh, many ways to uh, continually grow in this spiritually in this Advent season. Uh, Advent, much like Lent, is a, a season of preparation and of uh, waiting and uh, so uh, at the information desk we have some devotional guides as well as the book uh, that we're using for our sermon series uh, Christmas is not your birthday please feel free to pick those up I mean we have them there available for you uh, I know I've already started with the uh, devotional pieces and uh, they're really great and it's a good thing to have each day to kind of center us and focus us <clears throat> in this season of Advent in, in preparation and deepening our walk uh, with God so uh, let us pray together. Well, gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your presence in our lives. So often, Lord, we seek to be in control, to be in charge, to have everything go perfect. And time and time again, <clears throat> you demonstrate to us that only you are perfect. Help us uh, in these moments uh, of imagining this young woman meeting you and experiencing a call. May your call, O oh Lord, speak to each of us in this hour. For we ask this in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. So how many of you in here have that streak, uh, what they call uh, perfectionism? Got a few folks here who say, hey man, you know, everything's got to be perfect. If it's not perfect, uh, life is not going to be good. We have that in our world. Now, some of us like myself, I'm not too worried about that too often and it drives my wife crazy. So, But <clears throat> there is that reality that even in the Christmas season, even on that Christmas day, we want everything to be perfect. Let's be honest, in many ways, the story of the coming of Jesus, we have sanitized it. We've made it this perfect, warm, fuzzy feeling and experience, and yet we know that only God is perfect. 
One of the great uh, movies of the Christmas season is National Lampoon's uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas Vacation. And if you remember, uh, Mr. Griswold is the um, Chevy Chase played this role of providing and trying to have everything be perfect. He has, uh, he, he takes the family out. They try to go out and find the perfect tree. And of course, that everything goes disastrous. And then we have a little clip here about how he's trying to make Christmas perfect by his Christmas lights. This is, friends, why I don't put up Christmas lights, you know? <laughs> Life does not always go perfectly. And yet, you know, it's within us, isn't it, at some levels, to strive for some type of perfection. We want that in our lives. We're uh, reading this uh, material called Christmas is Not Your Birthday because so often we focus Christmas on ourselves in our own lives or on our families or whatever that might be. And that's not completely bad, but in some ways we allow that to be the story of Christmas. When we know in this Advent season we gather to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus into our lives. And, and the question is, how do we prepare ourselves for that? The people of Israel, as we spoke last week, have been waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And in fact, we talked about expecting the miracle last week, about how the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah <clears throat> foretold that there would be a, a woman, a virgin, who would have a child, and it would be the great king of Israel in the line of David. And so the people have been waiting <clears throat> impatiently for a long time, waiting for this perfect king to come and set up this perfect kingdom that people would live in. Mary was a person who was also knowing this story and waiting for this perfection of God to come. As we remember this particular story, we recognize that for the people of Israel, and maybe even for us in our lives, there comes this time, a period of waiting that often feels like the absence of God. You know, God promised. God would show up. And we've been waiting and waiting, and we, we can't see. There's, a, there's this sense of, well, where is God in some of the experiences we've had in life? On the back of your, or the bottom of your, uh, back again of your uh, news and events, you see where it says, my takeaway thought, I'm, I'm inviting you to just think about a moment in your life when you've felt that sense of, well, God seems absent from me, or God seems silent for me. Maybe write down a jog, write a word or two or three that reminds you of that moment. It might have been a moment of difficulty. It might have been a moment of struggle. It might have been a loss of a loved one. But there come those moments in our journeys, much like the people of Israel, we're patiently waiting and it just seems like God is absent. Into that sense of absence comes Mary. God comes to the people of Israel, but they were expecting this uh, very grand uh, scene, this great picture. This warrior king was going to come and restore the kingdom of Israel because they had been not only in exile, now they, at the time of Mary, were under Roman rule. And they were tired of being ruled by these other people, and they were expecting this Messiah to come, this person who would come and show the great power and perfection 
of the world. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary and says, favored one. She's favored. And begins to then describe this, this story of God. How God is going to come and live among God's people. And that she will be the mother of God's child. Out of the silence, out of this absence of God, the angel Gabriel comes and speaks to her. And the power of God's revelation comes to Mary. But also for us as well. This is the story of Mary's call. Now when there's a call story from God, it usually has something where there's an announcement, a revelation. And then there's this startled response like, what is going on? Which then leads to that sense of, of hearing the angel say, don't be afraid. Because when you hear don't be afraid, that means there's something else coming. Again, the invitation to experience God's well, overwhelming love. And then there's that sense of doubt. How can this be? In the midst of this perfect scene, Mary is saying, hold it here, wait a second. There's some, there's some, there's some issues here. How can this be? How can this happen? She had forgotten that the one who was going to be chosen was a woman who had not had a child. And yet in the, this experience, we know that Mary was a young teenager. She was engaged, but she wasn't married. That must have been very troubling to her to hear this from God. That in the midst of this perfect scene that we see of God, God comes in and says... This is the ways of my kingdom. This is the way we come to experience. How can this be? Doubt is a part of the journey of faith. Struggle is a part of the journey of faith. Many great Christians throughout the centuries have struggled with where is God in the midst of that absence John Knox, the great the Presbyterian reformer, Martin Luther, C.S. Lewis, Mother Teresa. These and many others have experienced that, what we call the dark night of the soul. Life isn't perfect. We hope that life would be perfect, but it's not perfect. Even for those as deeply faithful as we are to God, there's something within us that wants to take control, that wants to be in charge, that wants to make it all perfect. And yet, as Mary receives this call, she experiences that moment of doubt. How can this be? Again, the angel explains to her how this is all going to happen and reassures her. And, of course, reminds her to not be afraid. And, in fact, even points to her relative Elizabeth. That she's not alone. That there's someone else in this journey of life. He was a recently graduated pastor from seminary. And he got his first church. And he was going around visiting the members of the church. And he had an African-American older gentleman in his church, and as he went to visit him, he noticed his Bible was well-worn that had been read over and over again. And so the young pastor said to, to him, so what is your favorite biblical verse? And the uh, old man said, it came to pass. It came to pass. He said, well, that's not even a whole verse. He said, well, every time I read in the Bible where it said it came to pass, out of the dark moments of my life, out of the moments of suffering, out of the moments when things were not clear, again, God would say, it came to pass. And I knew that God's glory would come and touch my life and has over and over again. Out of the 
absence of God, out of the moments of struggle and doubt, it comes to pass. The gift of God's presence, the fulfillment of God's word. In essence, God shows up. God shows up, and it's always in the places we least expect, in the moments when we're surprised. And even in this story, it doesn't come in the ways that we would imagine the perfect to be, and yet this is perfect. It is God's perfection. Because again, it reminds us, as it was said to Mary, there is nothing impossible for God. There is nothing impossible for God. If you have in this Christmas season a sense to move towards perfection, don't worry about the to-do lists of life. Don't worry about all of the things that I must get accomplished so that I can have that perfect Christmas because the perfect Christmas has already come. It has come in the gift of a child. It has come in God's perfect way, in God's perfect time, which often catches us off guard because we want everything to happen in our time. We want everything to happen in the order of how we see things. And yet time and time again, God's call, God's revelation, God's presence to us comes when we least expect it, when we're not aware of it, and there it is, the invitation to be people of faith. Faith in the midst of the absence of God, faith in the midst of the doubts in our relationship relationship with God, faith in the midst of realizing that God's fulfillment and God's kingdom comes in God's time. Our call, much like Mary, is to say, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I'm faithful. I'll stay faithful to you, and it, it's not in my time. It's not in my order, but it is in your time and your order. Millie and George had been longtime faithful members of the church. And this young pastor and his family had a, a little baby. And it came the day of the baptism. And uh, the pastor wanted to make sure that uh, Minnie and George were sponsors for their little one. Because they had been longtime faithful, truly faithful people of God. And after the baptism was over, uh, during that time... Minnie was holding this little baby, and the baby started to fuss a little bit, and, and Minnie said, there, there. You don't have to be afraid. There, there. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of to try to calm and quiet the child. And she succeeded. About a month later, Minnie uh, died, and this same pastor had her service. And the story of this picture of her holding this little baby uh, came to his mind. There, there. There's nothing to be afraid of. So often our movement to perfection is that we want to be in control. We want it to go in our order. But in all reality, People of faith are called to wait patiently upon God. To sense that even though we are not in control, we know that God is in control. That in those moments of the absence or those moments of doubt, we realize again and again that that is the place where God will show up. And God will invite us to not be perfect, but God will invite us to be faithful. And in the midst of that, may our response be, here I am, Lord. Here I am. May it be so. May it be so. Let us pray. Lord, we 
we always seem to want to have you act on our timetable. We, we have this desire to have everything go perfectly, and yet we know that often life isn't perfect. And yet you move into our, our world, but you don't come in the ways that we expect. You come in your time. You come in your way. And in essence, Lord, you call each of us to a place where we can truly be your faithful servants. That in the messiness of every day, you show up. You show up in our lives. You remind us of your truth. And you speak to our hearts. And you invite us to follow. Help us to follow you and seek you in the season of Advent and Christmas. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.